This is the Myonics Caster Optical Gaming Mouse, priced at $89 in Australia and $70 in the US, but can be found on Mass Drop for as low as $45 in the US. At that price, this mouse is more expensive than the Rival 300 and the G502. So can this mouse compete in the big leagues? The packaging certainly thinks so. Let's start off with a tour of the mouse. On the left hand side is an amazingly soft rubber textured side grip area for your thumb and two small macro buttons. Unfortunately, due to the positioning of these buttons and the size of my hand, I find myself pushing both the buttons together a lot of the time when reaching for the front one, so it would be better if they were positioned slightly further back to prevent this. The right hand side of the mouse is shaped so your pinky and ring finger fit comfortably into two small grooves. On top is a rubber coated scroll wheel with defined steps, perfect actuation force and RGB colouring along either side. Just below that is a single DPI switch which allows you to swap between up to three different DPI settings which sits a little too far back for my liking. The left and right hand click features Omeron switches which are rated at 20 million clicks. Where your finger sits on top of each switch is slightly concaved allowing your fingers to manoeuvre the mouse with ease. On the palm area is a small Myonix logo that is also RGB colour controllable. Underneath the mouse is two very large PTFE feet which allow for seamless gliding and the ADNS 3310 optical sensor which is regarded as one of the best sensors available. The entire top of the mouse is coated in soft touch rubber which makes it the most comfortable mouse I've ever held but it is prone to showing skin oil residue on this surface. Due to the ergonomics of this mouse unfortunately it is only suited for right hand use. Some features of the caster is a 1.8 meter braided USB 2.0 cable, up to 10,000 dpi which can be adjusted in increments of 50, 6 programmable buttons, 1000 Hz polling rate and 16.8 million color RGB on the two areas previously described which Myonix are calling it their Aurora multicolored lighting. Dimensions wise this mouse is 122mm long, 70mm wide and 40mm high and is slightly more weighty than other mice at 94 grams, but I do prefer my mouse to be heavier so this suits me perfectly. Now the specs are out of the way, let's move on to the performance side of things with some Counter Strike aim training, After I felt I am comfortable with the mouse, I move on to Team Deathmatch. Hmm. Battlefield is up next for both in your face combat Then onto some long range shooting. Aiming with this mouse felt right to me and I feel it helped improve my aim with the overall shape and sense of performance. Software is up next which doesn't automatically launch on startup which is disappointing. Under the mouse settings tab we have access to remapping the 6 buttons, a polling rate, double click speed, scroll speed and pointer acceleration with the ability to reconfigure these options on up to 5 profiles. Sensor performance tab is next which allows you to drag any of the three boxes to set a DPI speed, add angle snapping or tuning, change the pointer speed or lift distance and analyse surface option which requires you to drag your mouse across the surface you are using. I don't feel this feature works too well as I am using a high quality mouse mat that has never hindered my sensor on any mouse yet but it only says the quality is at 80% so I'm unsure how this is calculated. The colour setting tab is up next with the option to enable or disable lighting zones or selective which allows you to enable or disable the zones separately. You can select to cycle through each colour or manually select a single colour then select a secondary effect such as solid, blinking, pulsating or breathing. The lighting is very accurate and I feel it is the first mouse I've found to actually achieve an orange colour I like. The macro tab allows you to record new macros or delete existing ones with the ability to add delays. Finally the support tab allows you to go to the FAQ page, register your product, Email support if the FAQ didn't answer your question or check the downloads page to make sure your software and firmware is up to date as it doesn't auto update which is unfortunate. In conclusion, if you can afford it and are not really happy with a mouse like the Death Adder, this should be on your shortlist as its ergonomic design, soft coated rubber and concave grip areas make this mouse pleasant to use and feels amazing to hold in your hand. I wish either the palm area logo was larger or the lines on top of the mouse on the left and right hand side had integrated lighting as it is very minimalistic and with such great colour reproduction I wish there was more but this is just a personal opinion as many people do not care for lighting effects.
The caster will be replacing my G1 flick as my daily driver as the few problems I've discussed aren't enough to turn me away from such a fantastic overall gaming mouse. If you enjoyed this video leave a like, and if you really enjoyed it please consider subscribing for more reviews and other content in the future. If you have a suggestion, question or criticism leave a comment, and thank you very much for watching.